Hi, you've clicked on to today's Tropical Tidbit for Friday over here in the Atlantic. We remain very busy for late July, have had a lot of activity this month. Right now we are focusing closely on Tropical Storm Dawn in the north in the northwest Gulf of Mexico, about 12 hours, give or take a couple hours away from landfall in southern Mexico, and we're going to turn right into this storm right now. If we zoom in, the sun is just now coming up, so it's a little bit hard to see, but if we look at the shortwave IR here, the center is up here on the northeastern edge of this convection ball which has been sustaining itself last night fairly decently and we've actually had some good convection going but again sheared to the southwest of the center and thus the surface center is actually right along the northeastern edge of this as it is coming west northwestern towards the coast. If we turn on the tropical forecast points here, here's where the NHC had it at 2 a.m. Eastern Time, 1 a.m. Central last night. This is where they have it at 1 p.m. today. And if we look at where the center is along this track, here it is a little bit north of where the NHC track has it. The NHC track is like this, the current one. Here's where the storm is moving right now. So it took a little bit of a jog northward overnight. And I noticed that on satellite imagery this morning, this is moving in now and will probably come in near or just south of Corpus Christi, which is right about east line. And we can see the storm coming onto Brownsville radar now. There are some light rain bands in the northwest part of the system, and the center is probably right about here, just northeast of the convective ball. This little area right here is curling. It looks deceptively like an eye wall, but I really doubt that's what it is. It looks like the center is more up here, uh, just to the north of the convective ball here. And again, there are some very light rain bands to the northwest of the center, but the main rainfall is way down in this big convective burst to the south and southwest of the center, and this is what Texas wants right now. Texas wants this to come ashore. This is still a 50 mile per hour tropical storm. Not a huge deal with the winds here. We want the rain to come inland. The good news is that if the center is going to continue a little bit west northwest and come in near Corpus Christi, we may get this batch of rain to come in and cover deep south Texas, assuming that the convection and thunderstorms remain intense as the storm comes inland. It's not a huge storm. If we go back to the Florida here, you know it's not a large storm. We're not going to get a lot of rain bands spread up all the way towards Houston or anything like that, unfortunately. However, you can see there is some instability up here. A few showers may make their way on shore here. Nothing to bust the drought, but, you know, maybe a relief for a few people as the thunderstorm downpours bring, you know, a half inch, maybe an inch in some heavy spots along the coast as the instability allows that convection to fire. So we will hope for some rain from this as it comes inland. The forecast here has gone pretty well. As you can see, the convection is southwest of the center here, just like we were talking about for the last couple of days. Wind shear and dry air and sinking air along the Gulf of Mexico south of that big, big, big south U.S. ridge that has been keeping everything so hot down there has been suppressing the system and is keeping it down at a 50 mile per hour tropical storm. If we look at the recon, latest pressure, 1,004 millibars. You can see where the vortex message is. All the convection here is to the southwest of the center, and all the winds in here under the convective ball are really non-impressive right now. This is 10, 15, 20 knot winds of flight level, very unimpressive. The strongest winds are in the bare region northeast of the center outside of the convection here, and the flight level winds have not exceeded 45 knots. There's one 50 knot barb in red here. Surface winds have not exceeded 40 knots in this leg of the trip with the recon plane so far. So the maximum this is supported right now is a 50 mile per hour tropical storm and this is moving inland. I see no reason why the intensity should change significantly before landfall. This will come in as probably a 50 mile per hour storm, bring some rain hopefully to some folks in southern Texas and we will be watching this to see if we get some relief. More of a benefit than a nuisance right now. Maybe a little bit of a nuisance but more of a benefit than a danger at this point in time. If we move back, oop, I went ahead of myself here. Going back to the Atlantic, we have another feature to watch, Invest 91L out in the Central Atlantic. We will be changing our focus directly to this after Dawn makes landfall tonight. All attention is going to shift over here. Our next possible storm may be in the making over here. A very broad circulation is spinning away out here, embedded within the intertropical convergence zone, but showing signs of starting to separate, and this will eventually start to separate from the ITZZ as it moves west-northwest 
west towards the eastern Caribbean over the next several days. Last night, ASCAT caught the circulation, and we had a closed low shown in here with westerly winds to the south of it and easterly winds to the north. A nice closed low here. It is kind of broad still, and there's some dry air wrapping in. This whole area is very dry out ahead of it right now, and thus convection remains scattered with it, but the feature will have a lot of time to try to ramp up. Remember, Dawn was out here and had a broad circulation that wasn't even closed for the majority of the time, and yet he ended up developing farther west. We have an even nicer looking system here. Similar conditions, in fact, better probably in this area of the world once this gets farther west for this to move into, and this could be a real threat here. We have the GFS in five days showing what should be a tropical cyclone south of Puerto Rico here as it moves across the northeastern Caribbean and the Canadian by day six has an even stronger looking feature north of Puerto Rico. And that's just a couple of model flavors here. Most of them do try to develop it in some way. The European is a little bit weaker than these two. It doesn't show a closed low with it on the latest run, but the hints are there. All the models show this feature being a significant player in the pattern as we move on into next week and the issue with this is going to be where it goes. I mentioned yesterday that there may be a trough that tries to come pick it up. Here is that trough. Here's the GFS Ensembles Day 5. The shaded colors in orange and yellow and green here indicate the 500 millibar heights showing us the troughs and ridges that steer these things. Here is a trough off of the eastern seaboard in day five and the wave is somewhere in here in the northeastern Caribbean and it's easy to imagine how this trough could try to curve this up between Cape Hatteras and Bermuda and recurve it out to sea. However, the problem with this trough is again, just like the trough that was forecasted to recurve Don. Remember, Don was forecasted to recurve out like this. Of course he didn't. The problem with this is just like the Dawn trough that was supposed to recurve him, this trough will not be lasting very long and lifts out rather quickly. So if we go out from day 5 to day 6, the trough is uh, starting to leave already and by day 7 the flow becomes a lot flatter across here. So the ridge is rebuilding and nosing into the west over here, which means that if the wave is still farther south, like over here near eastern Cuba, like some of the ensemble members think, it has a chance to get into the Gulf of Mexico instead of curving up and out. Now given that this trough shouldn't be too awfully amplified, if it does recurve it would be rather sharp, so we're not going to be looking for one of these things that comes and sweeps up all the way into New England like this. Probably not going to see that. What we would see is if it recurves it would come up and then it would probably just curve on out to the northeast or east northeast with time there, perhaps getting close to either Bermuda or Cape Hatteras depending on how the steering pattern sets up if it recurves, but it's a long way out right now. We're just going to watch these models here. I'll be able to look at the pattern a little bit more deeply once dawn is inland and we switch our focus entirely to this wave, but it will be our next feature to watch, and who knows, we could get another named storm in July. Imagine that if we could get Emily before the month is over. That would really be something. So we'll continue to watch both of these features. Dawn, again, moving inland, not really a huge deal for Texas, hopefully bringing some beneficial rains. We'll continue to watch it through tonight as it makes landfall near Corpus Christi. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.